This girl is a crazy brother con. Whoever dares to bully her younger brother will be defeated by her with only one blow. Though being super powerful in another world, she is unwilling to fight the demon lord and only wants to get married with her brother. Therefore, in order to make her brother heart race, she always forcibly has physical contact with her brother in the name of helping him examine his body. But there are always various beauties around her brother. Some of them are mature and sexy, while some of them are cute and beautiful. To win her brother's heart, she has to fight against these beauties. Can the girl over come everything and win her brother's favor? Let's start today's ridiculous story. At the beginning of the story, three orc brothers are attacking a village in another world. Faced with their assault, the villagers scatter in all directions to evade harm. Not long after, the orc brothers seize control of the village. Just as they are about to celebrate their victory, the male protagonist, Asahi, makes his appearance. Identifying himself as an adventurer, he unsheathes his sword and issues a challenge to the orcs. Upon sizing up the slight figure before them, the three orc brothers can't help but burst into laughter, convinced he's no match for them whatsoever. However, Asahi remains confident, delivering a warning that unless they surrender at this moment, they will undoubtedly regret it. Hearing this, one of the orcs is angered, who raises his weapon and rushes towards Asahi. Just then, the ground suddenly shakes. As a stone pillar rises from the ground, the orc is sent high into the air. Immediately afterwards, the heroine Maya makes her debut. She kicks the orc hard and blows him up with magic, scaring the remaining two orc brothers away. Maya is Asahi's elder sister, and they came to this world because of an accident. Not long ago, Asahi got hit by a car as he tried to save a little girl. He thought his life had come to an end, but after a flashing white light, he saw the wyvern in the sky, and he realized that he had been reincarnated in another world world. Asahi liked to play video games and was very familiar with isekai stuff, so he didn't have any discomfort. Just then, he accidentally bumped into a man, and he habitually apologized in Japanese. To his surprise, the man responded to him in Japanese as well, which made Asahi realize that he did not have any language barriers with people here. Thinking he might be the favored one by God, Asahi took out his phone intending to take a picture and post it online, but he soon found that there were no network signals here. Though a little disappointed, he quickly perked up. He believed that with his experience in isekai games, he could be able to live a happy life here. The first thing he thought of was to sell his phone, which was useless in this world. In exchange for money, the civilization in this world appears to be on par with Earth's Middle Ages, indicating that the shop owner likely had never encountered a mobile phone. Despite this unfamiliarity, he willingly offered 500 gold coins in exchange for Asahi's device. With the money in hand, Asahi found himself drawn to the assortment of goods available in the shop. Following some careful consideration, he purchased a light leather armor and a sword. This marked his initial encounter with an authentic sword, compelling him to repeatedly wield it due to his fascination. Next, Asahi walked into the Adventurer's Guild. When the reception lady learned that it was Asahi's first time joining a guild, she was surprised and curious about him. She leaned on the counter, trying to observe Asahi's facial expression up close, which made Asahi a little uncomfortable, and her hot figure made him blush. But the lady mistook it as a reaction to his nervousness. Deciding to help Asahi get to know the Adventurer's Guild, she took an application form from her bookshelf and explained to Asahi the process of becoming an adventurer, considering it would be Asahi's first time to take a quest. She suggested that he go on hunting low-level monsters. Asahi took the advice of the reception lady, but as soon as he left the town, he encountered a very powerful wyvern. Faced with the fireball attacks, Asahi could only run desperately. He hid behind a rock, taking the opportunity to check his status. However, he was only given the skill of stone throwing at level 1, with which he couldn't defeat the wyvern at all. As Asahi was about to be pounced on, he helplessly called out his sister's name. As a result, a magic array sent his sister, Maya, to his side. In a bid to shield Asahi from harm, Maya unleashed a formidable surge of energy, overpowering the wyvern with a single mighty strike. Following the intense battle, Maya's emotions got the better of her, prompting her to rush over to Asahi with a mixture of happiness and astonishment at their reunion in another world. Subsequently, the siblings engaged in a heartfelt conversation, sharing the details of their respective experiences. It emerged that Asahi had been in a coma in his own world, and he often talked. Maya, picking up on this, speculated that his soul might have traversed into another world. Her fondness for her brother had always run deep, rendering her incapable of imagining life without him. As a result, she made the fateful decision to risk her life, hoping to find her brother in another world. Fortunately, her intuition proved accurate, ultimately leading to her heartwarming reunion with Asahi. 
As the memory ends, we're brought back to Maya's fight with the orcs. She couldn't bear the three orc brothers calling Asahi Pipsqueak, slaughtering the escaping two with her magic power to vent her anger. Just then, Maya notices a bruise on Asahi's face. As Asahi's older sister, Maya will never allow Asahi to be harmed in any way, so she pounces on Asahi, trying to cure the bruise by licking him over. Meanwhile, the surviving villagers, mistaking Asahi for the savior, come out to thank him. They are very touched, honoring him as mighty hero. Asahi's deed soon reaches the Adventurer's Guild. The reception lady tells Asahi that because he defeated the three orc brothers, his rank has gone up from the lowest rabbit class to the fourth ogre class. Such a huge promotion is very rare among rookie adventurers. The reception lady gives the ogre class badge to Asahi and reminds him that falsifying ranks is not allowed. If Asahi tries to promote the rank by disguising himself as a strong person, he will be sentenced to death. But the reception lady trusts Asahi, believing that he will not lie to her. These words make Asahi very nervous. After leaving the guild, he immediately comes to Maya, asking her to hide her strength while make him look like the stronger one. Also, to confirm Maya's strength, Asahi offers to check her stats. Mistakenly assuming he was referring to her size, Maya seizes his hand and places it upon her body. In response, Asahi's cheeks instantly flush, and he swiftly withdraws his hand, clarifying that he was asking about her ability stats. Therefore, Maya accesses her status screen, leaving Asahi stunned. The revelation unfolds that Maya's strength is so extraordinary that her ability stats surpass the confines of the screen itself. With such formidable prowess, neither humans nor monsters stand a chance against her. Contemplating this vast gap in strength, Asahi sinks to his knees in exasperation. He fervently reminds Maya to keep her abilities a secret, a matter known only to them. Maya agrees, yet in contrast to the topic of ability stats, she expresses curiosity about Asahi's body stats, specifically the number of moles on his body. Just as she's about to take action, an abrupt noise disrupts the moment. They follow the sound to the main street, where the shop owner recognizes Asahi and tells them that the people of the town are seeing off the strongest party named Clan Balmonk, in the hope that the party can defeat the Demon King. These words remind Asahi of the Isekai games he once played. Generally, once you defeat the Demon King, you can return to your own world. Learning of that, Maya decides to beat up Demon King real quick. The shop owner does not know the strength of Maya, suggesting that they gain experience first and increase their adventurer ranks. Because Balmonk's leader, Siegfried, is a dragon-class adventurer. Listening to what the shop owner said, Asahi admires Siegfried's strength, hoping to become like him one day. Right at that moment, an adventurer, envious of Siegfried's might, vents his anger by wrecking the tables and chairs within a food stall. However, nobody dares to intervene due to his status as an ogre-class adventurer. Recalling Asahi's ogre-class status, the shop owner suggests that he confront this aggressive adventurer. Hearing this, the stall owner's daughter implores Asahi for protection, a sentiment echoed by the surrounding spectators who recognize him and erupt into supportive cheers. Undeterred, the adventurer disregards it, belittling Asahi as a mere lightweight and challenging him to a fight. Witnessing her cherished brother being subjected to humiliation, Maya is angered. She's determined not to let the mocker meet his demise, but instead, to ensure he lives to rue his actions in the bedroom for the rest of his life. Upon hearing Maya's declaration, Asahi swiftly intervenes, urging her to cooperate with him solely to intimidate the adventurer into retreat. He assures her he's ready to comply with whatever she asks to accomplish this. With Maya's consent, Asahi issues a challenge to the adventurer. Asahi casually makes a move in the air, causing the ground to split in two. The adventurer is immediately gripped by fear in the face of this overwhelming might, prompting a hasty retreat. Onlookers are convinced this is Asahi's real power, and they pay him immense respect. Following this, Maya seeks her promised reward from Asahi. She playfully leaps onto Asahi and endeavors to kiss him. Amid Asahi's startled cries, Maya achieves her goal. One day, Maya catches a cold because she wears too little. Asahi therefore drapes his coat over her. Maya is very touched, but she wants Asahi to warm her with his body heat more. Despite Asahi's objections, she hugs him tightly. Maya feels happy every day, and she is glad that she can live in another world with Asahi. While Asahi is out, she sneaks into his room, jumping onto his bed to feel Asahi's remaining warmth. Simultaneously, Asahi makes his way to the Adventurer's Guild, driven by a desire to handle some simple assignments independently rather than continually relying on Maya. The attendant at the reception counter assigns him the task of gathering rainbow mushrooms from the forest. A cautionary sign posted at the forest's entrance alerts adventurers to the potential presence of bears. Despite this, Asahi attempts to reassure himself that bear encounters must be infrequent, only to be confronted by a massive bear shortly thereafter. Recognizing the futility of challenging it, he swiftly retreats, hastily throwing mushrooms to it. 
just as Asahi is about to be attacked by the bear. A mysterious girl saves him, suffering such a huge shock. Asahi accidentally falls and buries his head in the chest of the girl. This familiar touch makes him mistakenly think it is Maya who saved him. He calls out Big Sister affectionately, only to discover that this girl is not Maya. Her name is Kiramaria, and she happened to pass through this forest. She was called sister for the first time, somehow feeling a little touched. At this time, the big bear is back with its companions to besiege them. Kiramaria throws Asahi away and fights 13 bears alone. She knocks out all the bears with just one blow and holds Asahi before he falls. Unfortunately, Kiramaria's actions anger Kaiser Bear, the king of the bears. In order to avenge his followers, Kaiser Bear launches a fireball attack against them. Easy and calm, Kiramaria, who possesses terrifying power, manipulates the legendary hellfire to burn Kaiser Bear to ashes. Asahi finds himself overwhelmed by her formidable power, leading him to entertain the idea that she might be a demon. Kiramaria then discloses her identity as a prominent member of the Demon King's army, occupying a position as one of the six demon generals. She's actively searching for an adventurer named Asahi, having heard tales of his achievements and surmised he could potentially be the forthcoming hero. Unbeknownst to Kiramaria, the person she seeks is right in front of her. Upon this revelation, Asahi experiences a surge of fear, and his instinct prompts him to stop stealthily withdraw. However, his orb class badge, emblazoned with his name, inadvertently slips from his grasp, catching Kiramaria's attention. In that instant, she comes to the realization that she has underestimated Asahi's strength, and she readies herself to confront him. Knowing that he is no match for Kiramaria, Asahi can only run desperately. Thankfully, Maya senses that Asahi is in danger. When he is about to be captured by Kiramaria, Maya rushes to his side. Kiramaria is very dissatisfied with the sudden appearance of Maya and immediately attacks her, while Maya reacts quickly and fights back. To their surprise, neither of them defeats the other with one blow. Kiramaria sees Maya's strength, concluding that it must be Maya who has been secretly assisting Asahi. She is excited that she has found a comparable opponent and decides to initiate a fiercer fight. Kiramaria wields the power of fearful flare and hurls it towards Maya. However, to everyone's surprise, Maya effortlessly counters the attack using her wind magic. Just as Maya prepares to deliver the final blow to Kiramaria, Asahi intervenes. Given that Kiramaria has twice come to his aid, he doesn't think she is evil and urges Maya to spare her life. Upon discovering Kiramaria's history of protecting her brother, Maya abandons her intent to eliminate her. Kiramaria is taken aback by Asahi's attempts to shield her, fostering a sense of affection towards him. After the battle, Maya prepares a very hearty dinner using the mushrooms collected by Asahi. During dinner, Asahi mentions Kiramaria. He thinks her moves were powerful, and the names are cool. Maya is reluctant to lose to Kiramaria in any way. However, she is not good at naming, and eventually names her wine magic big sis Hurricane. In the following story, Asahi works hard to reach level 10 by finishing the tutorial. Maya is surprised that Asahi's level is increased so slowly. After discussion, they discover that only monsters that Asahi personally defeats can increase his experience points. In order for Asahi to raise his level as quickly as possible, Maya proposes that she control the monsters and then let Asahi defeat them, which is refused by Asahi then. Even if it is to raise his level, he doesn't want to bully a monster that doesn't have the ability to resist. According to him, deriving pleasure from the game lies in gradually leveling up. Conversely, Maya sees little value in this leveling process, as she can effortlessly dispatch any foe with a single strike. Maya's words deliver a heavy blow to Asahi. Despite his weakness, he remains committed to not artificially enhancing his level through cheating. As Asahi persists in frequently monitoring his statistics, Maya finds herself growing increasingly uninterested. Just as she prepares to push Asahi down, he employs a skill designed for escape during battles. Unexpectedly, his actions ignite Maya's competitive spirit. The more the prey resists, the more excited Maya gets. Asahi intends to persist in using his escape skill, but his mana is running out, rendering him unable to employ any further skills. After that, Asahi comes to the Adventurer's Guild. He doesn't want to rely on his sister all the time and wants to try teaming up with other people. Joining a squad is also one of the joys in another world. Team members can cooperate with each other in battles and go on adventures in a variety of places. If he is lucky, he may even have a romantic love story with the female team members. The reception lady notices that Asahi wants to find teammates and leads him to the bulletin board where the team information is displayed. She suggests that Asahi form a well-balanced team, like the Clan Balmont. Monk. Siegfried and his teammates have a clear-cut division, and they are well in tune with each other, which is the ideal team composition. Asahi admires Siegfried and is curious about his current situation. The reception lady secretly tells him that the clan Balmonk was defeated by a mysterious man and has fled back to the royal capital. 
Asahi is taken aback, and he realizes the potential hazards of forming alliances. Now, he's indecisive about parting ways with Maya. While strolling down the street, he chances upon a group of troublemakers harassing a drunk man. Acting swiftly, Asahi grabs a stone and hurls it at the troublemakers, intending to divert their attention and give the drunk man a chance to escape. Unexpectedly, this drunk man possesses very powerful strength, handily overcoming the troublemakers. Engaging with the drunk man afterwards, Asahi becomes even more surprised as he discovers that the man is Siegfried. After losing to the mysterious man, Siegfried becomes very upset. He completely loses confidence and even begins to regret becoming an adventurer, drinking every day to relieve his emotion. Asahi comforts Siegfried, saying that although he was defeated in battle, he gained a friendship with his teammates. Siegfried thinks Asahi is naive, reminding him not to have illusions about his companions. His three teammates are all very strange. One is addicted to the host clubs, one is very arrogant, and the other suffers from social phobia and does not say a word. Since the mission to fight the Demon King failed, the clan Balmonk has been disbanded. Asahi has a positive attitude. He thinks they must have protected each other during their adventures, which can be considered a very good memory. Hearing this, Siegfried is convinced, and he decides to cheer himself up. After that, Asahi returns to the Adventurer's Guild and decides to choose a team that is recruiting members. Unexpectedly, the reception lady takes the opportunity to give him a task to fight a group of wyverns that are attacking the town. Because this is an emergency, she sends Asahi directly outside the city. As the wyvern is about to attack Asahi, Kiramaria protects him. The reason why she came to find Asahi is that she wants to return his badge and defeat Maya. Just then, a group of wyverns launches an attack on them. Knowing this, Maya shows up and aids Asahi in successfully accomplishing his mission. In a bid to triumph over Maya, Kiramaria resorts to extreme measures. She seizes Asahi and employs his capture as leverage, compelling Maya to confront her in combat. Fiercely protective of Asahi, Maya refuses to let anyone harm him, leading to an intense and heated clash between the two. During this time, a wyvern captures Asahi. In order to protect Asahi, the two girls temporarily reach a reconciliation. One is responsible for fighting the dragon, and the other is responsible for catching Asahi in the air. After solving the problem, Kiramaria once again holds Asahi hostage. Unexpectedly, Asahi escapes with his skill. Kiramaria thinks the siblings are very interesting and decides to let them go for the time being. Through this mission to fight the wyverns, Asahi understands the importance of Maya to him. Having a sister is enough for him, and he doesn't need to team up with anyone else. Subsequently, Asahi is entrusted with a rather unique assignment. The condition for acquiring a house is to rid it of an evil spirit. Given Asahi's naturally timid disposition, he recognizes his incapacity to confront the evil spirit and confides in Maya about his predicament. In contrast to her brother, Maya remains calm. Donning her combat uniform, she guides Asahi to the haunted house. Witnessing Asahi's visibly frightened expression triggers a memory for Maya. Back in their shared past, Asahi used to engage in horror games late into the night. He would often be frightened by the ghosts in the game and dared not visit the restroom alone. During those moments, Maya would offer him gentle reassurance and accompany him. Reflecting on this, Asahi regards it as a shame. He fervently asserts his maturity, claiming to have outgrown any fear of supernatural phenomena. Certainly, Asahi soon pays the price for his lies. When the thunder suddenly sounds, he is so frightened that he crouches on the ground with his hands around his head. Maya is well aware of Asahi's weaknesses. They are the closest to each other in this world, and she hopes he doesn't pretend to be strong in front of her. Her words make Asahi drop the disguise. He grabs Maya's scarf and follows behind her. Right now, he is in great tension, and even a wild cat on the side of the road can scare him. After some time of exploring, they arrive at the haunted house. As Asahi tries to open the door, he is attacked by evil spirits. The evil spirit warns them that it will drain the energy of all intruders, so they'd better leave as soon as possible. But Maya is not afraid of that. Ignoring Asahi's safety reminders, she opens the door of the house directly. Asahi then realizes that Maya's strength is more terrifying than the evil spirit and follows her inside. The house is fully furnished and they can move in immediately after a simple cleanup. Strangely, they do not find any evil spirits. Just then, a chair suddenly smashes into Asahi, causing him to get hurt. Maya immediately feeds him a potion. But this is just the start. Other items in the room follows to fly towards Asahi, while Maya makes him drink various types of potions to cure his injuries. Reluctant to witness Asahi suffer once more, Maya implores the evil spirit to cease its stealthy approach and instead confront her. At Maya's insistence, the evil spirit eventually appears. Faced with overwhelming fear, Asahi promptly seeks refuge in Maya's embrace. Maya embraces him warmly, cherishing the closeness. This tender moment does not sit well with the evil spirit, which seizes the opportunity to 
launch an assault. To its surprise, Maya effortlessly defuses the attack, and the evil spirit realizes that her prowess rivals even that of the formidable demon king's six generals. Consequently, the evil spirit intends to occupy her body, this is a situation that Asahi does not expect. Maya's power can even destroy the entire world, but it's now possessed by the evil. Frightened, Asahi can only call Maya's name desperately in an attempt to bring her to her senses. Just then, Kirimaria enters the haunted house in search of Asahi, who then hurries to her for help. Learning of Maya's situation, Kirimaria decides to exorcise the evil spirit by force, which may also destroy the house. To avoid it, Asahi pounces on her to stop her. Such close physical contact makes Maya quite jealous. To not disappoint Asahi, they decide to compete by arm wrestling. In the end, Kirimaria faints on the spot due to insufficient strength. Asahi thus loses his support and has to face the evil spirit by himself. Fearful of losing Maya, Asahi swears never to let the evil spirit take his big sister. Unbeknownst to him, Maya wasn't taken over by the evil spirit. As she neared losing control of her body, Asahi's calling brought her back to consciousness. After that, she pretended to be controlled just to tease Asahi. She didn't expect to hear Asahi's true thoughts, and feels very touched. As the mission is completed, they successfully own the first house in another world. Having secured ownership of the house, Asahi formally establishes himself within the town. The receptionist, in an oversight, assumes he is a formidable adventurer and entrusts him with a new assignment. A recent discovery has unveiled a dungeon nestled deep within the forest, although the danger level of it remains unverified. Seizing this opportunity, the receptionist implores Asahi to venture forth and explore, hailing him as a hero destined to conquer the task with ease. Enveloped in the praise, Asahi finds himself swayed, and he commits to fulfilling the request. Opting not to disclose his plan to Maya, he resolves to finish the task solo. Yet, Maya's profound concern for his situation drives her to discreetly trail him to the dungeon's entrance. At Maya's request, they enter the dungeon together. Since Asahi is proficient in various games, he knows dungeons very well, but his force value is still low. Unable to conquer the dungeon with theoretical knowledge alone, he must cooperate with Maya. While encountering the undead, Asahi pounces on Maya to the ground to stop her from using magic. He explains that her magic is too destructive and can easily cause the dungeon to collapse. Not wanting to be protected by Maya all the time, Asahi takes the opportunity to attack the undead. However, his attack causes no damage to the undead. Seeing this, Maya intervenes to help him. Even if she doesn't use magic, she can still beat them all with bare hands. Eventually, they manage to conquer the dungeon and find three bear cubs in the deepest depths. Asahi has a very kind personality. Worrying that other adventurers may hurt these bears, he decides to advise the adventurers guild not to open the dungeon yet, citing the unstable situation of the dungeon. Asahi's vigilance remains unwavering throughout his adventure into the dungeon, only allowing him to unwind once he leaves. In stark contrast, Maya derives enjoyment from the expedition, believing that people facing danger together often develop affection for one another and harboring hopes of being a couple with Asahi. Yet, when Maya proposes drawing closer, Asahi refuses. Presently gripped by hunger, he's eager to make his way home. Learning of his hunger, Maya hastens back home to prepare a meal. Unexpectedly, in Maya's absence, Asahi stumbles upon a group group of monsters. Overwhelmed by fear, he tries hard to make his way back to town. On his way, Asahi bumps into a very beautiful woman. He can tell that she is not an ordinary human and thus is very wary of her. But he never expected that this woman is actually disguised by Kirimaria. As a demon, Kirimaria will surely be attacked if she reveals her identity in front of humans. But she desperately wants to see how humans live, thus asking Asahi to show her around the town. Asahi takes her up to a tall building overlooking the town, where Kirimaria takes the opportunity to ask Asahi if he wants to become a demon. She loves Asahi. Even without Maya, she can protect him. But Asahi rejects her, as he won't leave Maya. Before dark, Asahi and Kirimaria arrive at the Adventurer's Guild together. He reports how dangerous the dungeon was and gets paid handsomely. The reception lady seems to like Asahi as well, because when she sees him with Kirimaria, she feels very upset, careless about how she felt. Kirimaria takes Asahi to a nearby restaurant to eat. She doesn't have any common sense and doesn't even know she has to pay for meals. Asahi can only spend all his money to help her out of the embarrassment. After dinner, they meet Siegfried on the street. He has not yet got rid of the shadow of being defeated by the Demon King, and while shaking Kirimaria's hand, he senses her true identity. Extremely frightened, he bids goodbye to them, citing his not feeling well. Upon their arrival at Asahi's residence, Kirimaria maintains her human form. In an attempt to unsettle Maya, she lies that she is Asahi's girlfriend, 
However, Maya discerns her true identity from the very outset, and she beats her hard. In due course, Kiramaria reverts to her demon form, engaging in a clash with Maya. Asahi finds himself caught between the two, striving to mediate their conflict. Fortunately, he manages to defuse the situation eventually. Observing the generous dinner prepared by Maya, Kiramaria employs her magic to rouse Asahi's appetite, ensuring he doesn't let Maya down. With Kiramaria's presence, the dinner table becomes infused with lively energy. The sibling's adventure in another world continues. On this day, Asahi receives a mission to fight the Grey Wolf. After a period of training, he has the ability to fight ordinary monsters. Unexpectedly, after he defeats the Grey Wolf, its parent, a giant wolf appears and attacks him. Luckily, Maya has been secretly observing Asahi, so she immediately helps bring down the giant wolf. She then discovers the bruise on Asahi's arm, proposing to lick it. Shocked by it, Asahi immediately flees away. He returns to the town, only to bump into a very cute girl, Sophie. She is a healer belonging to a party called the Pitch Black Brigade. When she sees the abrasions on Asahi's body, she immediately casts magic to heal the wounds for him. By the time Maya catches up with Asahi, he's healed. Subsequently, Asahi heads to the Adventurer's Guild to deliver his mission's outcome. Unexpectedly, Tanya, the receptionist, bestows upon him an urgent assignment. A remarkably potent monster has shown up within the dungeon, prompting the Pitch Black Brigade to confront it. However, none of them have returned. Tanya beseeches Asahi to assist in their rescue. Concerned about Sophie, who is also part of the group, Asahi hastens to the dungeon with Maya. Upon reaching the dungeon's depths, Asahi is the first to encounter Sophie, who promptly faints. In her disoriented state, she mistakes Asahi for the legendary hero who vanquished the monster. Fueled by this misconception, Sophie offers to be his ally. Sophie tells Asahi that her mom was a clergywoman. When she was little, her mother told her that one day she would assist the exalted hero and help him save the world. It is her dream, so she wants to join Asahi's party. Maya is happy that Asahi has admirers and she warmly welcomes Sophie's join. Just then, the members of the Pitch Black Brigade and Sophie start to argue. They believe it was Sophie who attracted the monster in the dungeon because she acted in a panic. Enraged by them, Sophie mocks their incompetence and officially announces that she is leading the party to follow Asahi. The Pitch Black Brigade are so angry that they initiate a duel with Asahi. Sophie believes in Asahi's strength and forces him to fight them. That's when Asahi realizes that Sophie is actually a troublemaker. To not expose Asahi's true strength, Maya throws out a bottle of pepper, causing the others to be sneezing. She seizes the chance to defeat the members of the Pitch Black Brigade. Immediately after the battle, Asahi grabs Maya to leave. He is worried that Sophie will bring him more trouble, and doesn't want to ally with her. Nevertheless, Sophie's infatuation with Asahi is so intense that she directly heads to the Adventurer's Guild to seek him out, suggesting they embark on a mission together. This time, Asahi's assignment is to gather honey, a task assumed to be easy. However, Sophie, in an attempt to enhance his efficiency, lures all the aggressive bees to them. Outmatched by the killer bees, Asahi and Sophie flee, but Sophie eventually stumbles and falls, recognizing that evading the danger is not the optimal course of action. Asahi summons his courage to confront the queen bee, yet, before he can act, a boulder strikes the enemy, and Asahi survives the crisis. Sophie mistakes the intervention for Asahi's magical prowess, and her admiration for him deepens. She encourages him to rest while offering to complete the task of delivering the honey to the guild. After Sophie leaves, Asahi meets Maya and Kiramaria. It turns out that the boulder was created during their duel, which unexpectedly saved Asahi. The next morning, Asahi goes to the guild to check if Sophie has managed to hand over the honey, only to see her waiting for him. Though touched by her cuteness, Asahi still apologizes to her that he can't take her into his party. Sophie's story comes to an end for the time being, and Asahi soon begins a new battle. As the Demon King's monsters are attacking a remote village, Asahi is tasked with saving the village. When he and Maya arrive at the village, which was attacked not long ago. They rescue the surviving villagers, who believe the siblings can help them regain their home. And sure enough, Maya easily eliminates the monsters sent by the Demon King. At that very moment, a group of weak monsters starts to dance weirdly, unsettling Asahi's thoughts. He is abruptly consumed by an infatuation with Maya, repeatedly confessing his love for her. Maya is excited, and she compels the monsters to perpetually cast the magic on Asahi to ensure his fervent affection remains directed at her. In his oblivious state, Asahi even proposes to her. While Maya is immersed in happiness, one of the Demon King's six generals attacks her. Asahi wants to protect Maya, but he lacks strength and is ridiculed by the Demon General, which enrages Maya and she immediately knocks the demon down. Unfortunately, Maya's destructive magic also wiped out all the weak monsters, causing Asahi to return to normal. 
she tries to learn the dance, but fails, so she feels very incompetent. Just then, Asahi comforts Maya that she is the person he admires the most and hopes she doesn't demean herself. Hearing this, Maya is so touched completing the assignment. Asahi heads back to the town and coincidentally encounters Tanya accompanied by her brother, Roy. Tanya is dressed in her casual outfit today, a side of her that Asahi hasn't witnessed before, and he finds her appearance rather endearing. Roy, having heard tales of Asahi, greatly admires him. Given their plans to venture to the outskirts, Roy proposes that Asahi serve as their escort. Although worrying about exposing his true capabilities, Asahi is unable to disappoint Roy's high regard for him and consents to the proposal. On their way, a wyvern attacks them. Seeing Tanya comforting Roy, Asahi thinks of his sister who always protects him. He doesn't want to betray the trust of the siblings, launching skills to fight the wyvern. To his surprise, he soon knocks it down, gaining more admiration from Tanya and Roy. Happy about it, they continue the trip, while Maya, who has been hiding in the shadows, walks up to the defeated wyvern. It turns out that she has been following Asahi, and it was she who brought down the wyvern. Asahi is weak, inseparable from Maya's help. In the following story, Maya and Kiramaria often work together to help Asahi with his tasks, which Asahi is a bit frustrated about at first. Not until one day he discovers he gains a new skill called light magic. Does he cheer up again? To test the effects of light magic, Asahi unleashes it on a raging bull. However, the light magic literally just creates light, having no attacking power. Asahi remains significantly deflated, and he is incapable of cheering himself up for the ensuing mission. In an attempt to console him, Maya and Kiramaria propose that his light magic can serve as a means of saving expenses, which obviates the need for lanterns. While they comfort him, Asahi's sadness and sense of inadequacy linger. At this moment, they come to a villa, a stronghold of the criminal clan known as Dark Crisis. Known for their skill in forging adventurers' ranks to exchange for money, they attract their attention. Within this world, Maya and Kiramaria stand as unbeatable forces, rapidly eliminating the gang members. At that very moment, Sophie brings the villagers to witness the hero Asahi battling the criminal clan, compelling him to engage in a duel with the leader. Despite sharing the same ogre-class adventurer rank as the leader, Asahi knows that his rank is fake, and he can't win the duel. To help Asahi out, Maya uses magic to destroy the leader's weapon, and Asahi seizes the opportunity to defeat him. To reward Asahi, Maya once again hugs him. Meanwhile, the villagers at the scene regard Asahi as a hero, asking him to help fight the orcs. Elsewhere, an adventurer named Gloria is fighting against another criminal clan. She is very strong and easily defeats the entire clan. As a competitive girl, Gloria can't bear Asahi, someone who has just joined the adventurer guild, to upgrade faster than her, so she decides to have a duel with him to test his real strength. Coincidentally, Gloria stumbles upon Asahi's confrontation with the formidable three orc brothers. Wary of potential harm to the nearby villagers, Gloria intervenes to aid Asahi in vanquishing the orcs. After that, Gloria can tell that Asahi is weak in strength, suspecting that he may have employed unscrupulous means to attain his ogre-class status. To safeguard Asahi from Gloria's attack, Maya employs her magic to conjure a deep pit between them, concealing herself from Gloria's view and leading her to mistake Asahi for the one who cast magic. To compound matters, Gloria's private part is exposed during the process. Consequently, she formally challenges Asahi to a duel, scheduled for a few days hence in the arena. On the day of the duel, Asahi's friends come to watch the match. Having no confidence in himself, Asahi is anxious before the duel. Thankfully, Maya promised to secretly help him, relieving his nervousness a little bit. However, Gloria's maid sees it through and stops Maya during the duel. Seeing this, Kiramaria decides to take place of Maya, who, however, convinces her to trust Asahi this time. As he needs to grow, Asahi thus has to rely on his own strength. He does not rush to attack Gloria. Instead, he just keeps dodging her attacks. During the process, he finds her flaws and uses light magic to blind her eyes for a short time. When she falls for being blind, Asahi points his sword at her. Gloria is confused why Asahi didn't attack her at all, and Asahi simply responds that he will not attack girls. His words touch Gloria, who admits her loss to Asahi, but she vows she'll come back to him. Afterward, Asahi and Maya undertake a mission to find the golden flowers. Uninvited yet determined, Sophie, self-proclaimed as adept in gathering, forcefully inserts herself into the group. En route to their destination, they encounter a crossroads, proposing that they divide into pairs. Sophie pairs herself with Asahi, leaving Maya alone. However, Asahi worries her presence may lead to trouble. Consequently, he convinces Sophie to partner with Maya instead. Later, as Asahi ventures forth alone, he finds himself confronted by two goblins. In this dire predicament, his luck saves him as Kiramaria, coincidentally passing by, comes to his rescue. Just then, Asahi suddenly hears a piercing scream. 
he follows the voice to a village, finding a necromancer maiming the villagers. Such a cruel behavior enrages Asahi, and he immediately fights the necromancer. As he defeats the skeleton soldiers, the necromancer starts to become interested in him, intending to suck his soul away. Kiramaria discovers that Asahi is in danger and hurriedly stops the necromancer. It is worth mentioning that this necromancer happens to be a subordinate of the demon general, so he recognizes Kiramaria immediately, they belong to the same camp, and he admires Kiramaria's strength very much, proposing to attack the royal capital with her. Before she responds to it, Asahi rejects the idea in place of her. In his eyes, Kiramaria is a very just and kind girl, and she will definitely not harm humans with the evil necromancer. Hearing the compliment, Kiramaria can't help but blush. Just then, the enraged necromancer intends to kill Asahi. Only to be eliminated by Kiramaria. As the necromancer dies, the villagers' souls return to their bodies. Meanwhile, Maya and Sophie have found the golden flowers, completing their task. Upon Asahi's return to the Adventurer's Guild, he's taken aback by the revelation that Tanya has mistakenly credited him with vanquishing the necromancer, bringing him a step closer to a promotion. Leaving the guild, he encounters Gloria, who has harbored feelings for him since their duel. However, her nervousness prevents her from mustering the courage to ask him out. Eager to win his affection, Gloria seeks the assistance of her maid, Kuan. Gloria's weird behavior confuses Asahi, and he thought she's coming for suspecting his rank fraud. Hearing this, Gloria suddenly comes up with an idea. She invites him to do a task with her under the pretext of assessing his strength. Gloria is tasked with destroying the tray ant and rescuing the missing adventurers. During the process, she tries to get close with Asahi, but she is so strong that she always hurts him. Asahi thus complains to Kyuan about Gloria's brute force, thinking that she must have worked hard training herself. Seeing them talking, Gloria is surprised that Asahi can have a common topic with Kyuan, and feels very envious. Just then, she is suddenly caught by the tray ant, causing Asahi to see her private part again. Gloria is extremely shy, hurriedly casting her skills to defeat the tray ant. Although she successfully completed the task, she did not perform well in front of Asahi. To get in touch with Asahi once again, she plans to hire him to help with carrying her luggage. Gloria is from a wealthy family, but at the same time restricted by it. She has been troubled by this, finally deciding to live by herself despite the butler's obstruction. Noticing Asahi is carrying the luggage, the butler mistakenly assumes he's the one who influenced Gloria to leave the house. Consequently, the butler recruits a dragon-class adventurer with the intention of teaching Asahi a lesson. However, before they take action, Maya detects the butler's motives and expresses her displeasure, causing both the butler and the adventurer to retreat in the face of her power. Through a telescope, Kyuan witnesses Maya's intervention and realizes that Asahi, like Gloria, is constrained by familial concerns. As someone who cares deeply for Gloria, Kyuan proposes the idea of forming an adventurer's team with Asahi, aiming to bring joy to Gloria's life. Actually, Asahi also wants to form a team, which Tanya is very supportive of, because a famous adventurer's team is quite beneficial to the guild. Besides, there are some tasks that are only available for teams. Asahi takes on Tanya's advice, but he can't make a final decision. Just then, Sophie overhears about Asahi forming a team. Overjoyed, she hugs Asahi tightly, offering to be his teammate. Gloria happens to pass by with Kyuan, furious to see Asahi and Sophie being so close. As she walks away angrily, Kyuan asks Asahi to seriously consider forming the adventurer's team. Gloria has no common sense, no ability to live independently, and no partner to rely on, so she hopes that Asahi can be Gloria's team leader. However, Asahi struggles with feelings of inadequacy about assuming the role of team leader due to his weak combat skills. Upon returning home, he seeks Maya's perspective on the matter. Maya firmly believes that combat strength is not the sole criterion for leadership qualifications. She reminds Asahi that he has grown significantly stronger and encourages him to embrace a greater sense of self-assuredness. Encouraged by Maya's support, Asahi gathers a team of adventurers, consisting of Maya, Sophie, Gloria, and Kyuan. Unfortunately, during their first mission, Asahi is petrified by the basilisk, and his fellow teammates fail to find the potion required to turn him back to his original form. Maya tries warming Asahi with hot water, but it doesn't work either. Just as Maya is about to kiss the cursed wound on Asahi, Kiramaria stops her. She then uses magic to help Asahi get back to normal. Next, they are tasked with eliminating sharks. Maya is determined to undertake this task solely with Asahi. However, their fellow teammates are keeping a close watch on Asahi's movements, shadowing him all the way to the beach. Kyuan prepares swimsuits for the entire team. Confronted with these attractive women, Asahi is blushed. Even more exaggerated, Kiramaria suddenly shows up at the beach wearing a very sexy swimsuit. Seeing this, Maya forces her to put on a relatively conservative one. To compete for Asahi, the girls start a beach volleyball match, and the winner is able to make Asahi do anything. 
In the end, Maya wins the competition, but before she can make a request, the vicious sharks suddenly attack them. During the battle, Asahi is wounded and falls into the sea when protecting Maya, who hurriedly follows to jump into the sea to find him. When Asahi is rescued, they are chased to a desert island where Maya and Asahi have a very happy time before their teammates come over. In fact, the girls have been observing them in secret because Maya, as the victor, deserves some private time with Asahi. However, their tender moment is abruptly interrupted by the unexpected return of the shark leader. Sensing the disturbance, the other girls swiftly come to provide assistance, but they are met with the astounding sight of Maya swiftly defeating the shark with a single powerful strike, as she is very dissatisfied with its appearance. Their last challenge is a slime flood. It strikes the town and causes severe damage. Almost all of the adventurers are busy rescuing civilians. Asahi and his teammates also join the rescue. He is responsible for taking down the giant slime. Sophie heals the wounded civilians. And Gloria uses her family's mansion as a temporary shelter to take in civilians. Maya and Kiramaria, as the strongest, easily find the culprit of the flood, a witch. The witch is no match for Maya, quickly defeated by her. Meanwhile, Asahi and Gloria team up to knock down the giant slime. Asahi's exceptional performance during the ordeal of the flood prompts the girls to throw a celebratory banquet in his honor. His considerable growth and strength owes much to Maya's guidance, a fact he deeply acknowledges and appreciates. With his own adventurer's team now formed, he anticipates a future filled with even more captivating and exciting adventures, which is the end of the story. My One Hit Kill Sister is a very interesting isekai anime, and in addition to this, Do You Love Your Mom and Her Two Hit Multi-Target Attacks? is also an anime with a similar theme. They both talk about kinship, one showing the deep affection between the male protagonist and his sister, while the other talking about the story between the male protagonist and his mother. For example, although the male protagonist in this anime Asahi is protected by his sister, he has been enhancing his strength during the adventures. Now he has learned many kinds of magic and possessed the ability to fight monsters. I believe in the subsequent battles, he will become stronger. If you want to see other isekai anime just like this, comment its name in the comment area, and I'll recap some of them. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in my next video.